Hey, what's up guys? Today we're going to be taking a look at these TE, we call them SEMO piercing connectors. A lot of guys were asking questions about them. They are my favorite connector for hooking up services or low voltage secondary, especially for insulated wire like triplex. And we're going to kind of compare them to some HTAP crimpets. Also, we're going to have a quick peek. We're going to be doing a crimp today with this guy here, which is made by Greenlee. This is actually a hot stick attachment. Now we're not going to cover this a whole lot. The only thing I'm going to mention is it's Bluetooth remote controlled. So you can have this guy on a hot stick, wireless, do a double click. And you can have somebody operate your crimper from the ground. As I said, we're not going to get a whole lot into that just yet because Greenlee's actually designing a new, it's not a crimper, it's something else. Hopefully I'll have one in my hands within a couple of months. I'm super excited to try it out and show you guys. For now, top secret stuff, but hopefully that comes soon and we'll show you how this Bluetooth stick attached crimper is gonna be an absolute game changer. A lot of guys have been asking about these, as well as the, the smaller versions we use for street lights, especially asking if this metal part becomes energized once the connection is made, which it does not. But these guys here, man, since we've had them on our trucks, so much safer working on a rat's nest of a pole. Rat's nest meaning there's wires all over the place. You got your rubber gloves on, you're skinning wires live, but there's just dead shorts and cross phases and yeah. Whole lot of stuff going on these guys here you don't even have to touch any live wires at all they're extremely beneficial to the trade so a lot of you guys probably are familiar with this there's a lot of different brands a lot of different types again this is my favorite we'll go over that a little bit in a minute before we do that this everyone that works on power lines know what these guys are h taps that's pretty basic stuff you have your wire going one side. This side is uh, three aught stranded to one aught ACSR. And this side here is one aught stranded to number six solid. So the first disadvantage to using H taps is you've got a dozen different sizes on your truck. So rather than just a bucket full of these, that's one size fits all. You've got these in all different boxes. If you run out of one particular size, you could show up to do a service. You're missing that size. You don't want to use the wrong size, like this guy, and crimp a smaller wire into that because it's, it's not going to make a good connection. The biggest advantage to these H taps is they're super cheap, like less than a dollar a piece. I think the price has gone up a bit recently, but compared to piercing connectors, they are quite expensive. This piercing connector is at least 10 times the price. So, in a world where you're making literally tens of thousands of connections a year how can you justify spending your money on a piercing connector versus an h-tap so we're going to take a look at that as well as where the price is a little bit steep we started trying out these guys by burundi they're called i just totally destroyed the label but it's called the fast hat by burundi they're pretty cool a little piece of wire here so you can squeeze this guy here bite the wire and then your other wire, that part you just squeezed, it just pops into place. You tighten it down, good to go. So we've been using these on the neutral wires, the bare neutral conductor, like this guy, and the piercing connectors on the inflated wire, just from a cost perspective. You can use these bare to bare, there's no issue, it's still rated for it. The only difference between this guy here, after talking to the manufacturer, we did have them add a shear bolt like this so you don't have to worry about over torquing it and breaking the connection all right so triplex generally used for low voltage you could have like 600 volt 347 600 on three phase uh, that would be quadrex this is our triplex because there's three wires on our system we have 120 volts phased ground 120 volts and this is your neutral which is tied to ground you measure your voltage across your hot and your neutral you've got 120 120 across the two hots, you've got 240. 
So we got another piece of triplex here. This guy is one aught. Super standard size in our area for feeding a home with a 200 amp entrance. So generally speaking, we roll up to a house. We're gonna hang this on the pole, run whatever, 25 meters from the pole over to the house. That's attached to the house. And then you have the service wires coming out of the mast. So for the last 19 years of my life, we show up and use these guys. Now the downside is, as I mentioned, there's a good chance this is live. If it's not live yet, you're gonna be working on the other end, hooking it up to live wires. You're gonna have your 1KB gloves on, and of course, we've got our cut proof gloves on, safety glasses, and in my backyard. This guy's not gonna fall on my head, so I'm okay without a hard hat right now. Also, it's in the evening, I'm not on duty right now. So, you're gonna have to skin the wires. Doesn't take long, obviously. Skin our number two side. All right, so we skinned our two 120 volt wires. Let's just pretend that this is coming off the house. The house side's gonna be dead. This would be the live one. So when you're connecting that, you wanna be real careful that even with your tools, your knife, whatever you're using, you don't hit that up against your neutral wire or the other hot. This guy here probably normally bend the back out of the way so we don't have to worry about that. Same with those other guys. But you're going to look for the right size connector, which is going to be this guy. Pop that guy on. Put him on the wrong side. I should also mention they're filled with Penetrox. You can see all the goop that come out of that. A lot of comments in the videos asking why I didn't put Penetrox in my connections. All of our connectors come preloaded with Penetrox. So we're going to put that guy on there, give it a squeeze by hand, just so it holds the wire in place a little bit. We're going to see if I can't bounce this on the cable. Adjust the camera a little bit. There we go. And I should mention, sorry my head's going to be out of the picture for a minute here because not to create a setup in my backyard, but if we remove this stick attachment, this can be used manually. But we're going to try it out with the remote, as long as it's still turned on, which it looks like it is. So let's give this guy a crimp. There's uh, for your H taps. There's two standard sizes: your O die and your D3. This is going to be one of the larger crimps. So we're going to go to the D3, double tap. that last crimp but that's okay let's pick up the camera here and take a uh, closer look at things so you can clearly see the one I missed and that's a horrible crimp job so I was trying to balance everything but a few myths I want to mention some people will crimp so there's no seams from one end right to the other they'll put like eight crimps on there on your crimps there's actually lines you see those lines one two three four five six so the manufacturer's recommendation is six crimps. So ideally, your crimp it should have a little bump like that. This one's a little bit big. That guy's a complete fail. But yeah, that's a crimp it. Problem with these guys, water gets in them, no matter how hard you try to cover them up. I mean, if you sap tape these guys up real good, you could keep the water out. Problem is the sap tape, if the sun dries them out, they crack through, you get some very sharp edges. So we have these crimp it covers. We put that guy over top. Lock this guy in place. Sorry for the bad camera stuff going on. Totally unprepared today. All right, so that's it. So that's what you're gonna see at 90% of the homes in my area. Little holes here so you can stick the uh, probes in for checking voltage. A lot of times I'll just kind of stick it in the end there. But not a bad product. Uh, I'm going to say fairly high fail rate over time. If this is near the ocean, near salt air, it might have 5 10 years in town here. You probably get, I don't know, I don't know what they're rated for, but easily 
30 years out of them. These guys, we started using them a long time ago. I've been with the company for over 20 years, almost 21 years, and we've always had these, but because of the price, we would only use them near salt water, near the ocean, as they don't corrode nearly as bad. So I'm gonna show you guys why that is. And basically, you don't skin the wire. You're gonna go right over top of the insulation. So the connection is not exposed to the salt air, the moisture, anything like that. And you can see inside, they are preloaded with some silicone. Let's try to wipe that guy off here. All right. So that rubber, as you squeeze it down, it does take quite a bit of pressure to, to snap that off. So as you squeeze it down, it's actually gonna compress that rubber a tiny bit. And as it compresses that rubber, it's just gonna be like nails on a cat. There's gonna be spikes push out from that rubber. We'll see if we can, actually what we'll do once we put it on, we'll open it up and show you guys how it pierces. I was hesitant about these connectors years ago because it's two little prongs on each side that stab into the wire. And you're hooking these up on a 200 amp entrance house but I've virtually had none of them fail. When I go to a trouble call and I have a partial power, I've never showed up to a partial power and it had been a piercing connector that failed. So these guys work awesome. We don't use them on primary. These guys we do up to 200 amps at the most. These guys can be used on primary. We just started using them. I think they're gonna be good, but I haven't been using them long enough to have a big opinion on them. Saw them in lots of videos from a lot of companies down in the U.S., so I think they're catching on. But here's the biggest thing about these piercing connectors. You're up on a rat's nest of a pole. Let's get our number two lock out. Here's the other one. Knife. Don't need it. All these boxes. Nope. Press. Don't need that. You just need a ratchet or this overkill of a torque wrench way too big for a connection this size but as i mentioned it's got a shear bolt on it so we're going to use the overkill torque wrench i'm calling it a torque wrench because youtube can be sticky with certain words sometimes so here's what i want to show you guys when using these piercing connectors again universal the size doesn't matter whether you put the number two on one side or the other what I like to do is leave a tail two to three inches on either side. So if you're kind of at a bad angle like this here, you want to make sure it's fully seated in the groove. You can see the groove. If it's coming out sideways, you might miss that blade that pierces into it. So you do want to make sure it's fully seated. And if you have wires that are being stubborn, easily just tighten that down by hand. A lot of times I'll just put the impact wrench right on it. Now before we put the impact wrench on that, let's flip the camera around. You can see it is fully seated in the groove on both sides, very important. And also these caps, you can see there's a cap on each side. I don't like to do this because they fall off easy. Ideally I would have left another inch or two there. But a little trick is, if you take the cap on the right <clears throat> and pass it over onto the left side, it has a little bit of tension on that little tail and it's not going to fall off. So we'll take this guy here, we're going to crisscross it over onto this side, tighten that up. Don't have to put those guys on first, but it is a help because now you don't have live ends. <clears throat> so as I mentioned, we haven't touched any live wire. Still wearing our 1KV gloves, which are not these, because this is this wire in my backyard. But up a pole, 1KV gloves, or your 20KVs, class two, class zero. We didn't expose any live wire. No skinning. We're gonna put our impact wrench on there. This might get loud for a second. You wanna make sure you don't go through to your second nut. This is one of those sockets where it has the 9 sixteenths and the three quarter. So we're gonna go on our 9 sixteenths, tighten her up. And let's shoot the bolt right off. This guy is 
at proper torque. And then you want to do a voltage check at the customer meter before you leave. Make sure you did pierce it. Maybe once or twice I had one that didn't. Usually someone went up and didn't make sure that it was sitting in the groove on both sides. But now let's remove this guy. And we're going to flip the camera. So that's what makes our connection. The teeth just barely bite into that wire. Honestly, if, if I hadn't used them before, I'd be extremely skeptical. Skeptical. You can see, come on camera, change your zoom. It really likes my blue chair in the background. Alright, we're going to go back over the table. Come on, there we go. So it does bite all the way around into the cable. And now you can see where the teeth, now that they bit the teeth, poke themselves through. Those are the teeth inside the connector. So those teeth connect internally from this side through to this side. And this bolt is isolated from the connections inside, as well as this side as well. So there's no danger of shorting anything out. So that's pretty much it guys. I did just want to show you guys a closer look at these piercing connectors. A lot of buzz in the comment section around piercing connectors, especially in the street light videos. Uh, I mentioned rat's nest a few times. I think I actually titled the video rat's nest or maybe on the thumbnail I said rat's nest, but check that out and you'll see what I mean when there's a whole lot of low voltage wires on a pole, which can be a nightmare for hooking stuff up live. Not to mention you're in the front of a transformer, you're hooking leads up in front of the transformer. That transformer casing is bonded to ground. You're working with a crimper inches from the transformer. They do have these insulated guards, but still. These guys, love them. Super glad our company is looking at going with these full-time. Game changer. So now you know, if you hear me refer to a piercing connector or a seamal, as we call them at the office, you know what we're talking about. Appreciate you guys stopping by as always, and we'll see you all soon.